Hi everybody interested in this sort of thing. This sort of thing today being uh, my unboxing and first time I've ever handled a Chris Reeve uh, Damascus bladed knife. A um, couple of quick things before I get started. Um, I've been posting uh, these videos, uh, particularly knife videos, but uh, at least one uh, fountain pen video online to different forums and groups. Um, and on the advice of Will G from the Chris Reeve um, community, um, I started a YouTube channel. So um, over the past uh, week, I've been uploading all um, the videos that I did um, that were posted on um, Facebook groups um, to a YouTube channel. And this is the first one that I'm um, filming that will actually go up on the channel. Um, so, um, hopefully as time goes on, I'll get a bit better skill at editing and things like that. But most of these videos are filmed in one shot, although I'm waiting for a delivery this afternoon. Um, and I got tired of waiting. So I started filming and, uh, this video may get interrupted if, um, if, uh, they de decide to deliver, but, um, that's uh, too bad. Uh, I'll, I'll just edit together two halves or something like that. Um, so um, here I am unboxing yet another uh, unexpected um, uh, surprise uh, Chris Reeve knife. And I should learn not to speak so soon because I think in the uh, Sabenza 31 video, um, I said, uh, oh, well, you know, I, I don't see myself owning a Damascus blade for a while or something like that. And then all of a sudden this one came up and <laughs> I had to have it for various reasons. Um, and it, it seems that, um, there's a couple of other, um, Chris Reeve knives that I'm going to be buying in the very short term near future before I sort of cool down for a while. And I should watch saying cool down for a while because every time I've said that there's been something else that, that came up that I, I sort of had to move on. Um, but, um, so for the time being, Oh, I wasn't expecting all that. Um, <laughs> uh, looks like I'm going to have to throw those out on the, oh, I can just throw them over here. Um, but, um, for the time being, um, I've been waiting for the big brother knife to this one. Um, my small Sabenza 21 with a black micarta in single blade, uh, blue hardware, double lugs. Um, and that, that knife, uh, large Sabenza 21 arrived on, uh, New Year's Eve and it had a, an error, uh, and it had to go back, um, to be corrected. So, um, right now it's somewhere between, um, Thunderbird gear in Canada and Chris Reeve knives. In fact, last I spoke to Chris Reeve knives about something else, um, it was there. So, um, it's being corrected. Then it'll go back to the Canadian dealer, um, Steve at Thunderbird and then to me. So in the meantime, uh, this knife became available and I had to have it for reasons I'll explain. Um, also, uh, with all the other um, uh, videos I've got on my new YouTube channel, it's very knife heavy um, at the moment because it seems that all my attention has been taken up with Chris Reeve knives of late, just because I think of the end of the manufacture of the Sabenza 21 and the beginning of the... Um, Sabenza 31 production and uh, I should just say on that front um, I do plan on doing another video about the um, 31 it's a very smooth knife it's smoother I think I said this uh, in the video I did about it is um, it's the smoothest opening um, Chris Reeve that I own um, especially out of the box I'm like more and more impressed with it every day um, the th um, pocket clip has not grown on me yet. Um, and I, I'm having a feeling that it won't, but I, I will do a follow up on this, um, probably in another several weeks. Um, it's not getting carried that much, uh, just because I love this one so much. I can barely put this one down. Um, this one's clearly, clearly a standout, 
favorite for me. Um, even when I have all my Chris Reeve knives laid out, this is the one I grab. Um, but I am going to do a follow-up uh, once I've had this for a while, um, probably in the next you know month. Um, and also after I do get the big brother to this one, so I can do a side-by-side -side comparison with similarly sized, both large uh, 21 and 31. So um, that's one thing I plan on doing. Um, and uh, I have a couple other ideas for videos once I stop having this influx of Chris Reeve knives, of new Chris Reeve knives coming into the collection. But this one, so this one um, became available. I saw it online in one of the uh, sales groups on Facebook. Um, and uh, <laughs> the thing that sold me was, uh, and I hope this doesn't end up backfiring, but the thing that sold me was the birth date. So if I open this up, um, and you have your standard stuff, look at other videos online if you wanna know what's in the package. Um, but, uh, so we have a stainless uh, raindrop uh, double lug, which I like, um, although it's gonna be, um, uh, silver hardware, natural canvas micarta, which I don't have yet, and the birth date, December 17th, 2019, which is a an interesting date because it is the first day of production Sabenza 31s. Um, so um, this one's made, uh, although production on the Sabenza 21s is still going on right now, uh, today is the 4th of February, uh, 2020, and um, uh, according to Tim Reeve, um, production will go till about the end of this month. But um, this was sort of the beginning day of the overlap. So the beginning, the first production 31s and the final push um, on the 21s. So it's an interesting date. Uh, and um, so aside from the look of this and the fact that it had natural micarta, which I don't own one, and, and um, uh, Damascus, which I don't own. Um, the fact that it has this date, but also <laughs> the large 21 with black micarta that I have that's back at Chris Reeve to, to have the correction made has the exact same birth date. So not only will the large black micarta be the big brother to this one, this knife, uh, sorry, to this a small one in my hands right now, the one that I'm opening right now is going to be the twin brother of that. Um, so um, this is that's the reason why I I sort of decided oh I gotta have it and uh, yeah and there's a couple other last minute gotta have it so I, I I'm gonna have to I think I'm gonna have uh, before the the Sabenza 21 production ends but you'll see those videos as they come out. Um, and hopefully, um, with my new sort of channel, I'll get these these videos up within a couple of days of the knife arriving. But uh, this arrived this morning. I, I always try and film right on the day it arrives, um, just so I, my excitement is is part of the video. And like I said, I'm not a knife reviewer. I do this for myself um, and for people that are interested in hearing the story behind my collection and how it develops and the things that interest me. So I'm not here to to give you measurements and 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 uh, statistics about the knives. I'm here to give you my feelings about it and my story and things like that. Um, so, uh, well, um, nice that it comes with a, uh, a pocket slip. And I guess that's because it's Damascus because it, uh, the plain bladed or the S, um, 35 VN blades do not come with this because, um, like I said, I had my large black micarta 21 in my hand for a day before it got sent back and uh, it didn't have that. Um, and just a word about the, the shipping. So um, this came from Knife Joy, which is uh, in Arkansas, through uh, Gary from the, the um, online uh, groups and he is a remote seller. Um, so Knife Joy does not import to Canada or ship to Canada. But Gary was uh, willing to have it shipped to him, and then he sent it to me. And I've had the best luck with this one. I was so um, I always worry when it's not coming directly from Chris Reeve. Um, but this one, I didn't even get charged uh, 
duty or customs fees, which is really it's provincial sales tax. And uh, I didn't get charged this time. So I kind of won on this one. But um, that's another video I plan on doing, especially for the guys on the Canadian Knives and Gear channel, um, or sorry, um, uh, Knives and Gear group. Um, so they can, um, hear about my experiences and what I would sort of recommend, um, if you're going to be, uh, buying Chris Reeve knives from the U S, um, and why it's probably better to, to stick to Canada, but what, what occasions where you should wear, uh, if you're getting it from the U S, um, you know, what, what things you should look for. Anyway, um, let's get the box of the way. Uh, and as, as always, um, you all know what's in the boxes. Um, so I'm not going to cover that and I'm just going to take the nice, uh, Chris Reeve burrito and open it up. And I know this has been open because knife joy, um, did have photos of this and I wouldn't have bought it, bought it probably if I hadn't seen the photos with the, the birth card in it. So, um, but this is going to be interesting because I have never, ever seen a Damascus blade um, with my own eyes. I've told people before, there is no store in my city that carries Chris Reeve knives. So everything new, uh, everything I buy is, uh, or every Chris Reeve knife I've ever touched is one that I have owned. And if it's something new, which they all are, it's something that I have never, ever experienced before. Uh, I like this micarta. Um, I, I don't have any natural micarta, and I like this one. They seem to come up with different shades, depending, I guess, on the batch of the micarta um, that um, they use uh, when they make the knives. And... Um, uh, there's some that are more caramel color. Like if you go onto the Chris Reeve website now being early February, 2020, and look at the pictures of the Sebenza 31s, um, the natural micarta inlaid 31 that they have a photo of the, the, the color of the inlay, of course they have different shape inlays on the new knives, but, um, it's a very caramelly color. And I like this sort of more darker brown color, but this one has a lot of white to it, which is the, um, the, uh, weave of the canvas that's, that's in the resin that makes up the micarta. And I think, um, somewhere down the road, once I'm done acquiring all these knives that seem to be coming in left and right, um, I will be doing a video about micarta because there is some interesting stuff about the different looks of micarta. Like you notice on this one, it's very wavy, the lines, uh, are very wavy and that's just you're seeing the the micarta from a different direction of the weave than on say a knife like this one where the um the streaks are more straight now if you look really closely there's a small bit of wave in that those lines but they're they look a lot straighter and i think this has to do with the way that the the actual block of uh, canvas micarta is sliced when they make the inlays um so sometimes you get pieces with where the weave is um you're looking at the weave from one direction versus another and I don't want to generalize without knowing because I'm just going on my instinct and what I see in photographs online and other people's videos and what I purchase. But it seems that on the larges, they seem to come this way. And on the smalls, they come this way, at least lately, uh, late uh, 2019 and early 2020. And if I look on my uh, Sabenza 25, which I have handy here, um, it, it is more the wavy style. It's a bit faded or a bit darker now because it's been handled a lot lately and I haven't cleaned it in a, in a while. But um, uh, it's more this wavy style. It, it was very similar to this uh, as far as the white streaks when it was brand new. Um, and then I've heard people talk about old, old micarta versus new. And I need to do more research about that. Um, um, because I don't know if this sort of less wavy streak pattern is a new thing just because they started cutting it a different way or if or if it's a um it's a feature of new batches of micarta whereas in the past they all used to come out wavy like this uh, that the weave was sort of equally wavy both this way and that way if you can imagine when they when they weave the cloth together um, you're looking like the waves are basically those, those threads going through each other. Anyway, enough talk about the micarta, but I really like that color. Um, standard lanyard. Um, 
Yeah, I'm going to have to think now that this is the twin brother of the other one if I'm going to have to buy a backspacer for that. Um, and now my first look at Damascus. So the top of the blade doesn't show any um, Damascus or streaks, uh, at least that I can see in this lighting right now. So that's interesting to me. Um, some of them um, seem to show streaks of uh, the layers of the Damascus. Um, yeah, um, and this is going to be a drop point blade, and I see that the the jimping is the same as on the 31, because um, I, I noted in my previous videos that the, um, the Insingo blade um, 21 smalls have a, a sharper jimping than on the drop point blade smalls, um, which I'm not here to talk about, but... Uh, Anyway, let's have a look at this. My first ever look at the Damascus blade, and that is uh, really stunning. Um, I see a lot of photos of these in the groups, and I, I admire uh, Damascus uh, blades, but I'm very picky about um, the Damascus that I would buy. And uh, so I was extremely glad that I was able to see this um this very nice photographed before I bought it because um, some of these raindrop Damascus blades, um, the, the drops look square, squarish. And this one, they're nice and round, which, I mean, if you look at that, um, you know, well, it does have a bit of a squareness to it. But I mean, the point of this is to imagine raindrops hitting the surface of a pond and le le putting out their ripples, and that's what that's what that's looking like to me. And I love this. This is this is really what a gorgeous blade. And um, Chris Reeve um, at the workshop. I should stop. I, I know in previous videos I've called it a factory. It's not a factory. It's a workshop. Um, and these people are take great care. Um, but they put a coating of uh, Renaissance wax on that to protect it. Um, now, I don't know if, if, if the um, Damascus blades are pr more prone to corrosion. Um, I've never seen any photographs or anyone talk about um, having their Damascus blade corrode. Uh, I don't know if that's because they protect them all the time. Um, in fact, the, the, the package I'm waiting from Amazon for will have... Um, a container of renaissance wax in it um and hopefully like i said they won't interrupt the last few minutes of this video um but um this um this raindrop damascus made by uh chad nichols um raindrop has three different steels in it, it has like aeb-l um stainless steel which is a steel commonly used for razor blade manufacture it has a really fine carbide um so um it's, uh, you know, it's got a trait of being very um, sharpenable, I guess. You can make it quite sharp. And then you have 440C, which is a high carbon um, stainless steel, probably the, the highest strength, hardness, um, wear resistance of all the um, 440 or 400 series uh, stainless steels. And then you have 304 stainless, which is very corrosion resistance. Now, of course, those steels are not... Um, all melted together they're they're in layers and that's what makes this pattern as well as there's a proportion of pure nickel uh, which will also increase the uh, corrosion resistance so um, yeah uh, I mean and the difference between uh, as far as the the blade and, uh, and the s35vn um, is in hardness um, the these are uh, 56 to 58. Uh, Rockwell hardness, uh, whereas the S35VN are 5960 with the current heat treatment being used at Chris Reeve. Um, but I, I, I mean, I have a feeling that this is not going to get a lot of use by me. I mean, I talked in a previous video about the sort of different levels of, of user collector. I mean, the base level, you have a, a, a person that buys one knife, um, 
to use and they're just a pure user and then you have someone that has a couple of knives because they like collecting but they still use them um and i'm sort of like to look at myself as on that spectrum where i use all my knives i have one chris reeve tie lock that i don't use and that's sort of my museum art piece but every other chris reeve i own i use uh to one degree or another um as i said my small Sabenza 21 in Singo is the current favorite and basically is in my hand all day long when I when I can when I can have it uh, or when I can use it um, or it's in my pocket um, but this is you know this is getting into again like that that um, my spare tie lock this is getting into sort of a bit of an art piece and I have to sort of admit that I've reached a stage of my Chris Reeve collecting that is not um you know I'm not going to be using um uh some of these knives as much as others and so I've become one of these sort of uh, aesthetic collectors where uh, I may be purchasing the odd one that does not get used and just gets admired. Um, but we'll see. I mean, I've also said that when you spend the kind of money you do on a Chris Reeve knife, there's a period of sort of, you know, you've just laid out uh, that money. Um, you sort of baby it for a while. You don't want to get it scratched. Um, you know, uh, and I mean... <laughs> There's always that you know thing I love is that that newly uh, sandblasted or bead blasted surface on the handles that it just feels so you know grippy and that eventually wears away quite quickly. So you know there's this tendency to sort of like keep it as pristine as possible until you do get that scratch on it or whatever. And the 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 financial outlay goes further into the past and um, you know you don't feel as bad about using it and getting a scratch or whatever. And, uh, you know, I will say like this, you know, this one has been in my hands for about two and a half months now, and it's not wearing as fast as, as, uh, as I would have thought, well, it got gunk on it from opening up the package here, but I mean, you know, the, the lugs are wearing, but the, um, the handle is still, you know, it is definitely not as, as, uh, rough as when I got it. In fact, it's a lot smoother. Um, but it's still looking quite new, uh, but I'm, I'm using it more and more. Um, we'll see what happens with the, with the Damascus. Um, but whew, I have to say, um, yeah, I mean, if I look at this a certain close up and I'm, 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 I'm trying to hold it at different angles because I can never see my stupid camera. And so I don't know how it's looking on the video until I actually, you know, download it onto my computer and, and, and see what, what you, the viewer seeing at home, but with my eyes looking at it, I mean, I see mainly circular, uh, raindrops with a little bit of a squarish outline on them. And, um, this is the kind of raindrop Damascus that I would choose if I had to pick one. And I was so glad I got to pick one, but who oh boy, I think I had, I had thought about getting a, a Damascus bladed Chris Reeve knife in a, in the future. And I had a plan for what that was going to be. And then this came up and I, now I have a feeling that I've been bitten by the bug, but, um, there's a couple other Chris Reeve knives on my list. Uh, and, um, then um, I think I'm going to cool it for a while and do some videos maybe about my Carta, maybe about, well, definitely about the comparison of the 31 and uh, my other large 21 that's coming. And of course, there'll be an unboxing and arrival of that. And then, you know, also want to do one about the backspacers. So there's a couple other things coming. And I don't think the videos are going to be coming as fast on my channel um, as they have been the last few days because just the last week or so, I just uploaded everything. Now... The videos will only be released when there's something worth releasing or something has happened. Anyway, um, thanks for tuning in for those of you that have. And uh, I hope you enjoyed seeing the arrival of my uh, first ever Damascus blade. The first time I've ever seen Damascus in the real world with my, with my eyes uh, in my hand as opposed to in a photograph or in a video. Um, I'm going to have to learn, I, I think I'm getting fingerprints on it in the wax that they've put on, because I, I think, I think I've dulled it on the edge just by touching it there, or at the tip, so I'm going to have to look into 
how to how to maintain it and how to put the wax on it and how to keep it looking nice and shiny like that um especially if i start slicing stuff with it <laughs> but i have a feeling that this is not going to do a lot of heavy slicing uh, anyway thanks for joining me i hope you enjoyed uh, seeing this uh my latest uh and i i suspect within another week or two there's going to be the the black micarta uh with the um s35 vn blade will be arriving so uh i'll probably see you when that video comes around cheers Hey, here's a uh, bonus segment to the video I just finished making. I uh, just finished unboxing this. Um, but one thing I just thought of when I uh, when I turned off the camera is um, one thing I'd heard about uh, uh, Damascus blades is that when you open them, you can actually feel the Damascus metal. And I can't. Uh, I just checked it right after I turned off the camera. Um, maybe with other types of Damascus, like the uh, uh, the ladder Damascus or the boomerang Damascus um, or basket weave, that you can feel the actual um, roughness between the different types of steel. I think I feel it with my fingertip. I mean, there's definitely a texture to the blade. Very, very, very slight. Um, but I mean, these lines are so fine. But I, I'd heard that you can feel on, on the Sabenza 21s, on the detent ball, um, you can feel it as it moves between the different layers of steel. But no, um, it's just as smooth as S35VN as far as I'm concerned. But um, I wanted to do that on video. Um, and the other thing, and I always tend to forget, is how does it slice? Uh, so I got some grocery receipt paper. Um, and just like all the other Chris Reeves, uh, out of the box, um, you know, goes through, well, that's a bit of a tear there. Um, but, um, yeah, and it's sharp, just like, just like, well, look, yeah. Oh, well, kind of, bit, sometimes it seems to slice, sometimes it seems to start a slice and then tear. Oh, there we go. Yeah. So, um, anyway, the Chris Reeve um, sharpness out of the box is consistent as far as I'm concerned. Um, but I just wanted to add that little extra bit to the video of the, um, the feel of it as it... Um, yeah, it's just perfectly smooth. Of the Damascus uh, on the detent ball and of the um, the slicing. Anyway, thanks for tuning in for the extra bit. Bye-bye.